Adventures on the Sword Coast, Chapter 16 After defeating the adult white dragon, Freovain, the party retrieved the dragon horde amassed by Cryovain, which amounts to around 25 assorted gemstones. Amos the Destroyer and Tristan pull out their daggers and start to harvest the teeth from the dead carcass of Freovain, each managing to collect four large teeth. Princess also tries to recover some teeth but is unsuccessful. With nothing else of worth on the roof of Icepire Hold, the party return inside to the grand looking room with furs piled up in the far corner. Making their way to the spiral staircase, they head down to the unexplored area in search of the kobold who ran away from them earlier. Amos recalls he was heard shouting that he must warn the master. They had best be on their guard. Heading to the damaged section of the southwest corner of the fortress, they arrive at a door. Amos listens for signs of life, but only hears the wind. Opening the door, it reveals the perimeter wall defences. Following the wall to another breach at the far east side, the party notice a ledge some 20 feet down on the cliff face and what may be an entrance to a cave. Before going any further, the party decide to take a rest as the adrenaline from the battle with the dragon starts to fade, they realise that they are wounded and tired. Making their way back to the grand looking room on the first floor, they secure the entrances and rest for an hour. Feeling better, the party gather their possessions and return back to the battlements where they saw the cave entrance below. Securing a rope to one of the arrow slits, Amos asks for a volunteer to climb down to the ledge and investigate. Princess Lady Amastasia steps forward and prepares to climb down the cliff face, but Zurich, noticing the danger if she will fall hundreds of feet down the mountain, secures a safety rope to her. Amos the Destroyer has a wry smile on his face as Princess climbs down the rope while Zurek holds the safety line like an overprotective father would for his daughter. Arriving on the ledge, Princess peers into the cave with her dark vision and notices that it only goes back around 10 feet to a solid wall. It seems empty. Amos shouts down, Search for any hidden doors, Princess. Using her perception, she searches the cave but can't find anything. Tristan interrupts and says he could transform into a hawk, fly down and using his incredible vision, check for secret doors. Without a second thought for his safety, he jumps off the cliff, turning into a hawk as he falls then swoops into the cave below. Zurek mutters, he could have done that first without having to put Princess in danger by climbing down. Tristan searches the cave using the hawk's enhanced vision. It does appear as though there is a secret entrance, but is unable to determine how it opens. Unable to communicate verbally with Princess, he starts to scratch at the cave wall where the hidden door is and hopefully she will have the wisdom to understand what he's trying to indicate. Princess waves for Tristan to get out of the way then using her athletic ability tries to open the hidden door with brute strength. Although she manages to dislodge a few stones, the secret door will not open. She shouts back up the cliff that there is no way in, so the party decide to search the fortress for another way into the caves. Amos shouts down to Tristan, Can you set a trap in the cave? Just in case anyone tries to escape that way. Tristan changes back into his dragonborn form and using a piece of rope casts snare. Then the barbarians haul him back up to the battlements. The party head back into Ice Spire Hold but have covered most of the rooms on the ground floor already. The only area that might have a hidden door is the first room with a large crest symbol painted on the floor. Amos searches the most likely area for a possible secret door with the assistance of Princess and Tristan, 
they locate a hidden door leading to the north battlements. After you, Tristan, says Amos, as you found the secret door. On entering, it appears to be a mirror image of the south battlements. Working the way around, they arrive at another door, which Tristan in return politely invites Amos through first. Eventually, they end up back at the large recently used room in the northwest corner of the fortress. Regrouping in the northwest room, the party use their perception as a group to determine the most likely location for a secret doorway that the Corwell may have used to go down to the lower level. Zurek believes it will probably be in the old officers' quarters, and after a breach search, he shouts out, Door. Opening the hidden door reveals a staircase going down. Tristan takes the lead, followed by Princess, Amos and Zurek with Zari and Fairfax watching the rear. They arrive at the north end of a small square chamber, about 15 foot across, with a door on each of the other three walls. Each door has the word crypt, chiseled above in common tongue. Using his perception, Amos thinks that the kobold probably came this way and headed through the south door, judging by the faint tracks in the dusty floor. Always being polite, Tristan invites Princess Lady Amastasia to open the south door. Looking inside, the party see a tidy, well-kept room, with four stone coffins in each corner and a large one in the centre, where the kobold can be seen building something. Amos the Destroyer shouts to Princess, Kill the kobold! Princess, now in a rage, charges down towards the kobold with her blood axe, and with her first swing she critically hits the creature, separating its head from its body. Amos shouts, Princess, save some kobolds for us. Princess, still in a rage, now takes a swing at the stone coffin in the centre of the room, and manages to crack the stone slab that had been slid open. Amos the Destroyer enters the room and tries to lift the lid on the first stone coffin on his left, but it is too heavy to dislodge on his own. As the barbarians ransack the crypt, Tristan carefully checks the room, but does not notice anything else has been disturbed other than the coffin in the centre of the room. Amos shouts to Zurek, Can you help me get these coffin lids off? As Princess continues to rage, she attacks the stone coffin to the right of the doorway with her blood axe, while Amos and Zurek work together to remove the lid on the left coffin. Inside, they see the skeleton remains of a warrior, old and decayed, with a pendant around his neck. He had been laid to rest in a considered and respectful way. Fairfax Whitbeam and Zara Cree join the rest of the party, after investigating the pendant, the sorcerer is none the wiser about its origin. Meanwhile, Tristan has discovered that the corbel was trying to put together a large structure, made out of wood and metal. Fairfax can't work out what the contraption is, but remembering his history and days playing on the snowy mountains, Zurich recalls that it is most likely a large sled or toboggan. To ensure that there is no hidden magic that could be a danger to the party, Tristan performs an arcana check on the pendant, but all seems fine, so he takes the pendant from the left-hand coffin. After removing all the coffin lids, Amos suggests to Zurich that they respectfully put them back, but that the Goliath is not interested, and wanders off back to the entrance chamber. Fairfax has located the other side of the secret door that they could not open from the cave. It is a strange escape route. Curious, he thought. As Zurek returns to the main chamber, he and Tristan open the two remaining doors together. They lead into two more crypts, each containing around half a dozen coffins. Not as ornate as the main crypt, these more roughly cut stone coffins are unmarked. 
After further investigation, they are probably the fallen warriors of the warrior Denzander Amzar, who battled the Orc Hordes. They reflect on who the master that the Kobol is referring to could have been, but there is no sign, unless it was the long departed warlord. The party finish constructing the sled, but before taking it out through the secret cave door to the ledge, Amos remembers the snare trap Tristan set. He suggests that they take out one of the skeletons from a coffin to trigger the trap. But the voice of reason that is Fairfax Whitbeam says no, and points the barbarian towards the dead kobold. Throwing the kobold at the trap, it is catapulted into the air and left dangling on the rope. Moving the sled to the edge of the ledge, the party climb on board, peer over into the abyss below. But looking carefully, there could be a route down hidden by the snow. A few of the party hesitate as the drop goes on further than the eye can see. If they are wrong, it would be certain death. Aim at the destroyer with a wry smile, shift his weight forward and they are off down the mountain. With Zurich at the front of the sled, Amos the Destroyer tucks in behind the Goliath. Tristan holds on to Amos, with Zarya Kree and Princess Lady Amastasia waving their arms in the air with excitement. Fairfax Whitbean at the back starts to think that this was a bad idea. The sled moves slowly at first, weighted down by the six occupants. The metal runners dig deep into the snow and ice. However, this excessive weight also allows the sled to pick up momentum and it quickly picks up the pace, thundering down the mountainside. As a few start to panic, their fear is overcome as everyone starts to notice that they are travelling in a track that has been dug out especially for the sled. It is covered by snow, but the runners cut through this and into the icy track beneath. The sled turns sharp left, then hard right as it hurtles down the mountain. This continues for at least 10 minutes before the speed gradually diminishes as the scenery becomes less snowbound in the foothills. Another 5 minutes later and the sled is coming to a halt. Most of the snow has disappeared, replaced with rock and greenery. With a gentle thump, it stops against a large rock and they all jump off. Princess shouting with glee, that was fun. Amos looks back and replies, I guess you want to do that again, Princess. Gathering their possessions, the party make for Wave Echo Cave, as that will be the closest and safest place to rest for the night. On arriving at Wave Echo Cave, they are greeted by the dwarves who have already heard of the protectors of Philandalin by reputation and great deeds. The party stay overnight for a well-earned long rest. Fairfax Whitbeam asks how things are proceeding in the mine and the dwarves are encouraged by the progress being made. They are also pleased that the dragon threat is now being quashed as they need no longer worry about the supply runs being plundered by Cryovane. Zurek mentions to the dwarves that there are horses still up in the mountain, stabled in ice by a hold, but the dwarves are not interested. Too much trouble for little reward. While the party are resting, Amos the Destroyer crafts a necklace out of one of the four dragon's teeth recovered from Freovain, and gives it to Fairfax Whitbeam that evening. Fairfax, surprised at the gift from the barbarian, asks, have you changed your opinion about magic users then, Amos? Amos replies, Well, I suppose they have their uses in time of need. Fairfax, in a low voice, says to Zurek, I think he's beginning to like me. Zurek, in response, just nods slowly. The next day the party head back to Philandalin. As they approach the town, they can hear a bell slowly ringing out. This was the bell intended to warn the townsfolk of impending dragon attacks.
as the protectors of Vandalin slowly make their way into the town. Doors open and people come out to greet the returning heroes. Slowly at first, with comments like, Did you do it? Are we safe? And, Have you beaten the dragon? Fairfax responds by saying, Well, if you consider killing two dragons is safe. Two dragons? Did he say two dragons? One of the townsfolk shouts. Fairfax turns to Amos and says, I hope the beers are free this evening. Amos the Destroyer just smiles back at Fairfax. The bell, now ringing constantly, draws out all the townsfolk as everyone makes their way to Stonehill Inn. As the protectors of Phandalin walk inside, they are greeted with cheers and applause. Toblin Stonehill has all their favourite drinks lined up on the bar and shouts, Drinks for everyone, on the house! It is a great celebration with the protectors of Flanderlin at the centre of all the attention. Fairfax wastes no time in telling their adventures up to the top of Ice Spire Peak and how they killed not one but two dragons. In fact, it could have been five dragons. As he drinks, the story becomes more embellished. Although Princess, unaware that his inaccuracy is deliberate, keeps correcting Fairfax that it was only two dragons after all. Fairfax raises his glass to toast all the adventurers who are and once were members of the Protectors of Philandalin. After a whole afternoon of drinking, Toblin starts the feast for the evening and a huge boar is placed on a spit and roasted for all to share. Sildar Hallwinter comes into the bar to congratulate the protectors of Falandalin. By now the story tells of how they killed at least 25 white dragons, although Princess still insists it was only two, Cry of Ain and Free of Ain. Fairfax asks what Butterskull actually tastes like. Toblin explains that his taste is quite exquisite, but until Petunia the cow is found, sadly there will be no more butter coming from the ranch. Amos the Destroyer asks, Is it our time to move on now? Silder explains that he still has work for the party, as does Harbin Wester, the town master. So he invites them all to stay as long as they want in the barracks and on the payroll. Fairfax says to Sildar, Well, we have no plans, so I guess we shall stay. Amos agrees, we'll drink to that. The evening is spent celebrating and everyone has too much to drink, especially Amos. At the end of the night, even his mighty constitution is wavering. So Fairfax Whitbeam helps Amos back to the barracks in the early hours of the morning. As he does so, a dragon tooth necklace can be seen around his neck in the moonlight hidden under the sorcerer's robes. So it came to pass that Amos the Destroyer found what he had been looking for, friendship, and in the most unusual of places. His disdain of magic and those who wield it had been overcome. The heroic deeds of the protectors of Philandalin would travel far and wide. This would bring fame and glory, but it would also bring those who wished to challenge their status. For now, the protectors of Philandalin can rest and enjoy their moment of triumph and their stories together will continue for a time. Amos the Destroyer is still destined to wear the jewel crown of his people upon a troubled brow. For it is I, his chronicler, who alone can tell thee of his saga. Let me tell you of the days of high adventure.